Uh, this is a rapidly changing situation as we've all seen and the information does change by a minute by minute basis. Uh, before I start I want to give a shout out to all of the individuals that are working on the front lines and when we say front lines it goes from everyone from the public health nurses to the emergency room technicians and doctors uh, to the sanitation workers who are out there still collecting garbage and the individuals that are working in grocery stores. Uh, they've been put in a real stressful environment, as we know, uh, but they have to come to work. Uh, the truck drivers that are driving supplies, I want to give a big thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, we're getting through this crisis because a lot of people are essential workers, uh, and we need them to continue to do their job. So a big thank you to each and every one of you out there who's an essential worker, whether you're working on the front lines of health care or you're delivering groceries. Uh, for the people in this community. So a big thumbs up and a, and a thank you. Uh, once again, I'll be joined by Peter Anderson, who you probably can't see, but he's over there. Uh, he's going to be looking at a lot of the questions to uh, give you the latest that we know uh, in Erie County. County Executive Mark Polencars just began an informal afternoon briefing from his office. Let's listen in. Informed in Erie County residents, and that's incorrect. Uh, we know that tests have been done by Quest, by LabCorp, and there's a couple other healthcare organizations out there that have done tests. The positives on those tests have been sent to our office. We don't get the negatives. We don't know how many people they've tested that actually have turned out to be negative. We believe it's hundreds more. But right now, we know of at least 646 total tests because of all positives that are, are provided to us and the pendings and the negatives that we've performed ourselves. There's a narrative in the media that we are the lowest in New York State. I can't do a comparison because I don't know exactly every test that has been done in Erie County because we don't get the negatives for a lot of these others. We're trying to get that information from New York State to confirm how many tests have actually been performed by these third parties. Uh, we believe there's hundreds more now. And as you may have heard, Erie County government will be starting up testing again on priority cases as we received uh, a batch of reagents which allow us to do another 350 tests. We started taking samples on those today based on priority cases from healthcare organizations. So I want people to understand uh, that there are more tests that have been done than we're reporting on the totals, but that's because they're being done by other agencies, not just Erie County. Uh, positive tests. This is very important information uh, because we think it sends out a message that we want people to understand. Uh, only It's not just old people who are getting sick. Uh, as of noon, this is before we went up to 114. Uh, this is based on the prior figure, uh, which I believe was around 101 or so. Uh, but there were, 20, or there were six people between the ages of 0 to 20 who had tested positive, people between uh, 20 and 29, uh, 25 people between 30 and, and 39, and that's actually the largest group. When you look at this by uh, a decade, that's the largest group. Uh, 15, 40 to 49, 16, 50 to 59, and it's actually much smaller between 60, 69, 70, 79, and 80 and above. So we want people to understand that there was this narrative out there that, oh, I'm young, I'm healthy, I can't get COVID-19, the coronavirus, I'm immune to it. You are not immune to it. No one is immune to it that we're aware of. Anyone can get it. There are some people who catch the virus who do not have the symptoms that other people do, or they have minor symptoms. But we want people to understand is just because you're young of age does not mean you're immune. And as you see from the numbers behind me, the majority of people, uh, are actually under the age of 50. So I want people to remember that. 
uh, quarantine and isolation. As of 2 p.m., there's 114 people in isolation. 193 individuals have completed quarantine. They had potentially suspected, uh, been in contact with uh, the coronavirus or somebody who had it, but they've actually cleared quarantine. And 415 individuals right now are in quarantine. Uh, and we believe almost all of the latest cases were from community spread. Uh, the early cases were travel related. We believe almost all of the, the, recent, the most recent cases are from community spread. You should assume that COVID-19 is in the community everywhere and that you've been potentially exposed to it. Don't underestimate the risk. I'm going under the assumption that I've been potentially exposed to COVID-19. Uh, I don't know of a particular person in general who has it that I've been in contact with, and I've actually seen the list of the people who have it, so I don't think there's any one individual that I've been in contact with. But we know that just because someone is tested positive doesn't mean that those are the only people in the community. For every individual who has it, they will spread it to 2.2. And there was a, an estimate that was put out a number of days ago by a uh, healthcare organization and a research institute that said for every one positive, there may be 11 that are out there we don't know of. So if that's the case, and we're talking about 114 existing cases, that means there's potentially over 1,000 cases in Erie County alone. Uh, if you are feeling some of the uh, illnesses and you think you were involved in a public expo exposure at this point, you do not call our COVID hotline that we'll be talking about later. You monitor your health sy symptoms. If you're not having any health issues, just keep track of that. If you're having some health symptoms, you should call your doctor first. Uh, our prioritization, our prioritization, and this has basically become the standard for New York State as well, are individuals who work in healthcare, uh, medical facilities, uh, those that may have come in contact with an individual who actually has tested positive, uh, elderly chronic conditions. You can also put in there another one that we are looking at is also law enforcement uh, and public health professionals that are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you uh, do ha have some of these symptoms, uh, you might not get a test, uh, but you should monitor your condition and you should talk to your doctor. Uh, there are some tests that are being provided as we talked about now, uh, and we, we will be reopening uh, a drive through clinic uh, in the next day for the tests that are priority cases. Uh, but uh, you should not just assume that you're going to get a test because there is not enough tests in just in Erie County, or for that matter right now in New York State, to do everybody who needs to be or wants to be tested. And there's a difference. A lot of people want to be tested, but they're not showing any symptoms. So there's really no reason for them to be tested at this point. Uh, the COVID map was just updated, 114. Uh, the latest town slash village, the town of Concord, and the village of Springville now has one case. I've spoken to Supervisor Drake of Concord as well as uh, Mayor Krebs of uh, Springville and informed them of that. Once again, we're going under the assumption that it's everywhere. So even though there may be a dark uh, spot there, and it's not red, assume it's there. Uh, unfortunately, Wyoming County yesterday announced its first death related to COVID-19. Uh, we know there's cases in almost every county now in western New York. Orleans County just announced its first case. Everyone should go under the assumption it's in all of western New York. Uh, Self-monitoring, of course, we want people to self-monitor. If you do have a cough, shortness of breath, and a fever of a above 100.4, uh, you should definitely contact your doctor. Uh, if, you're, if you have a temperature of 98.7, 98.9, 100, just monitor it, but it should be okay. But once you get above 100.4, there's concerns, especially if you have a cough and shortness of breath. If you develop the symptoms, you should isolate yourself at home, keep yourself away from others, as well as contact your physician. Do not go directly to their office and do not go to the ER or urgent care because we do know there are people who are going to ERs and urgent cares that have it. Why do we know that? because they've been tested and they've tested positive. So if you don't have it, you don't want to go to the ER or the urgent care. If you do that, you're risking exposing yourself to COVID-19. Uh, we're responding through many different methods. Of course, as announced yesterday, uh, we've ordered 400,000 N95 masks that are approved by the federal government uh, to address these types of issues, including viral infections. 
We expect the first shipment to arrive by air carrier on April 11th. We're hoping to get them earlier, but right now we are. The date is April 11th, and those will be distributed to Eric Healthcare providers based on priority and need. Social services, once again, social services available. You do not need to come in person. Some people do, but you don't. You can call our social services helpline for temporary assistance for needy families at 858-8000. Uh, normally an in-person interview is required, but that's being waived at this point. Interviews are being done over the phone. Child care for essential workers. We've talked about this a number of times. It's very important for some folks. Uh, there is a child care clearing, clearinghouse through the Child Care Resource Network at www wnychildren.org or you can call 877-6666. Once again, the number is 877-6666. If you need child care, call that number. If you are a facility with open slots, call that number. We need child care for health care, especially in the overnight hours. Uh, mental health and wellness, big issue. We're worried about people's mental health and, and how they're feeling. Uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, AA and Narcotics Anonymous meetings have been suspended or canceled for now, but the addictions hotline is available. It's open 24 hours a day. If you have an issue with regards to addiction of any type, whether it's alcohol or drug, call 716-831-7007. Remember James Bond, 007, 831-7007. Crisis service hotline, if you're in a crisis situation, not knowing where to turn, feeling there's no hope, there is hope. There's people out there who care about you. Call 716-834-3131 in Erie County. The Crisis Service Hotline is manned 24 hours a day. Domestic Violence Hotline. Uh, we're worried about uh, increases in domestic violence cases and people, because of cabin fever, taking it out on their loved ones. Uh, there is a hotline for that, 24 hours to 1-800-942-6906. Once again, the Domestic Violence Hotline is one 800 942 6906. For your own mental health and wellness, take a break for your, your mental health, read a book, take a walk, talk to your loved ones, play music, or if you have some music to share, make a video like I have. Share with loved ones, including music videos. So far to Matchbox 20 and Goo Goo Dolls, there'll be more coming. I don't know exactly when, may not do it every night, uh, but I want to share something that I love, which is music with the people of Erie County and Western New York. I'm glad that people aren't enjoying it, but do the same thing. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, do the same thing. Send a, a message to your loved ones. If you play an instrument, sing, get out there. Share it with the world. Show people what, you means to you, what it means to you. And I know you're going to make people smile because I've been getting that response from a lot of people that they're smiling as a result of those videos. So uh, make certain you do that yourself to, to bring a smile to other people's faces. It's a tough situation. We understand the situation we're in. We're not certain how long it's going to be. Uh, a lot of discussion about whether we should restart the economy uh, and by letting everyone go back out again. Well, if we do that, uh, we know that thousands of people in probably Erie County in western New York will die. We need to do what's right to protect public health and the public's health. And I don't believe we should be sacrificing any one individual, regardless of who they are, just because we're going to have an economic downturn for a short period. Uh, we've had economic downturns in the past. I've lived through some of them myself when it was not good. I remember what it was like in Lackawanna growing up in the early 80s when people were losing their jobs when the steel mills were closing. It was bad. But we got through that. We're a better community today. And the country's gone through things like that in the past, like the Great Depression, the Great Recession, or the 70s themselves with the oil crises and the economic conditions where the interest rate was over 18, 20 percent. Uh, we want people to understand that we are not going to put at risk seniors or, for that matter, individuals who have immunosuppression issues. Uh, if we put everyone back out there, what about the child who has a, 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 an immunosuppression issue? That child could die because they then come in contact with someone who actually has the illness. We need to do what's right for the public and the best good of all. So that's why I believe we need to continue this uh, for the time being uh, so that we can ensure that we do the best to eliminate the risk from the coronavirus and COVID-19. We have our hotline. If you have direct questions related to the coronavirus and COVID-19, not hypotheticals, call 716-858-2929. That is manned from uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I've been down there every day. They're getting calls. Some days it's really busy. Some days it's a little slower. If 
you got a question, call the uh, COVID-19 hotline. Of course, there's uh, lots of uh, email, or not email, but websites that you can see, uh, starting with, of course, the CDC site at coronavirus.com, our Erie Do County one, erie.gov backslash COVID-19. Lots of resources for you out there. If you got a question, you can't find an answer on the internet, it's not a hypothetical, call our office at 716-858-2929. If the individual on the phone can't answer that question, they'll at least get you the resources and have someone call you back that can. Uh, once again, our website, erie.gov backslash COVID-19, all the information that you need to know about this. And with that, we will open it up to some questions. Uh, we did have a question uh, from our friends at Channel 4, what's being done about the homeless? Uh, George Rickert, and I want to let George know uh, that we have an, a task force that has been working through our Department of Social Services with the Homeless Alliance of Western New York to find and place individuals who are homeless in locations, including hotel spaces. Uh, there are a few that are actually in hotels right now. Uh, we're actually identifying more hotels for people who need spaces. Uh, some of these individuals are just are not uh, they don't have COVID-19, but they just don't have a place to go because a number of shelters have closed or reduced the amount of size available in their shelter. So we are working on that. We are very aware of that. Uh, we had another question uh, from the uh, Orchard Park Sun. Are towns asking if they can provide more help to the county during this crisis? And if so, what the county executive is telling the towns in response? Uh, we certainly appreciate the assistance we've had from town government. Uh, we are always uh, receptive to volunteers, but there are limitations on what we can do. Uh, we have trained volunteers that are manning our phone bank, including a special phone bank that is for the medical profession. So when you call 858-2929 uh, 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 for medical professionals, there's a special diversion of that line. Uh, and those individuals have been trained through our health department. Uh, we are re asking everyone in the towns to basically follow the rules that we're setting for the standard across the board, which is you had, first of all, to reduce your workforce by 50%. If they can work at home as a local government, they can work at home. If they can't work at home, you got to reduce them. And uh, we want people to avoid getting around in the community. It doesn't help if we have someone from Amherst where there's a hot spot coming in downtown. They may have been exposed and we don't know about it, and then they expose a whole bunch of other people. So we want people to understand that we're uh, doing our best in that situation to, uh, to protect the public. We are taking help where we need it, but uh, uh, we've had a lot of offers for volunteers at this point that we really can't fill. Uh, but I appreciate the offers, and we keep that information on, on site in case we need to fill it again. Questions? Peter Anderson. Okay, uh, here's a question. How is the county supporting frontline health care workers in housing instead of sending them to work? Uh, the question was, how is the county supporting frontline workers in housing instead of work? In health care workers in housing. In housing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little confused by that question. If we're supporting workers through housing uh, and, and sending them to work, of course, we're working with our partners in the health care organizations. I've talked to all of the CEOs of each of the uh, uh, hospital groups, Kaleida Health, Catholic Health, and ECMC over the last few days. Uh, about the resources that they need. They're very similar to what we've heard elsewhere, which is uh, they need more masks, they need more gowns, they need more uh, protectors, uh, face shields. Uh, we're working with our partners in New York State to achieve and, uh, and, and get those, but as we all know, it's pretty much a, uh, a, a shortage across the world. Uh, my office did commit to spend $1.1 million yesterday by purchasing 400000 uh, face masks, N95 NIOSHA masks. These are masks that are approved by the CDC that can be used in these high-stress situations where an individual has been exposed to the, the coronavirus. Uh, we certainly uh, are there to provide as much as we can to our partners in the healthcare field, uh, and we certainly want to thank and appreciate them for their good work. Will Erie County hospitals follow suit and ban partners in labor delivery? What can pregnant women expect? Uh, the question is, what can pregnant women expect? Are they, I don't, I think if you're pregnant and you're going to give birth, you're going to still give birth. <laughs> uh, there's elective surgeries that have been canceled, but I don't believe that pregnancies are considered elective surgeries. Uh, so if a person, a woman is pregnant and is, has a expect, expected birth date very soon, uh, I would expect that you should talk to your OBGYN and you would probably be giving birth on that date or there around it. Uh, those are not being closed to my knowledge. That's an essential service. Uh, we certainly need uh, doctors and nurses and OBGYNs as well as the hospitals to still uh, deliver uh, babies as they're born. 
Here's a question. I am out of state. Should I stay put or return home to West Seneca? Question is, I am out of state. Should I stay put or return home to West Seneca? Uh, I can't really give you the best answer for that. Uh, if It would probably be in your best interest to be home if you have health insurance that is a locally based insurer because then you don't have to, if you do get sick, you don't have to worry about the out of area insurance issues. So if you're down in Florida or Georgia and you're a snowbird thinking about coming back, uh, they, they're not reacting the same way down south, but we do know the coronavirus is down south and there are COVID-19 cases across the entire United States. If you're talking about another six months being away somewhere else, that's a different story. But if you were thinking about, uh, if you're gonna come back in two weeks, I'd suggest you come back sooner. Because if you do get ill and you have health insurance, uh, you don't want to have to deal with the out-of-area insurance things that often happen if you got to go to a hospital or an urgent care down in Florida or Georgia. Uh, you talked about homelessness a moment ago. Are there resources available for low-income people? Uh, the question was, are there resources available for low-income people? And the answer is yes, through our Erie County Department of Social Services and New York State. First off, if you are lost your job, you can apply for unemployment insurance through New York State's Department of Labor website. So just type in New York State Department of Labor and you'll be able to find right on the front of their page their unemployment insurance link and you can type there and apply for unemployment insurance. And if you need assistance like we talked about earlier, temporary assistance for needy families or the supplemental nutrition assistance program, that's the old food stamps program, or if you need health care. You want to apply for Medicaid, you can through the Erie County Department of Social Services site. Go to erie.gov, type in social services, or click on the social service department, and you'll be able to apply online. People are asking about driving bans or curfews. Driving bans or curfews. There are no driving bans or curfews in our community right now. I've dealt with this for the last few days. Lots of rumors about driving bans. Uh, there are no driving bans. Uh, we still are telling folks you can get out safely, but you got to do it smartly. Physically distance yourself. Don't do it in groups. Uh, don't be a COVID idiot. Don't go out there and party with others at your friend's house and say, hey, we, we didn't go to the bar, but we had a house party. Stupid. There's one of those people who's probably going to have it, and they're going to share it with everyone else. So don't be a COVID idiot. Uh, you can go out. You can, if you got to go to the grocery store, you got to go to the pharmacy, those are open. You got to go to doctor's offices, those are open. You can drive. Our parks are still open. We're asking people to use good judgment when you go to the parks. Don't do it in a group. Try to stay away. Walk the hike the trails alone or with your family members. Uh, but there is no driving ban. There's no curfew. And, and I don't see one coming anytime in the near future unless we have a mass breakout in our region, which while we have uh, COVID-19 in our region, uh, we don't have a mass breakout to the point where it's affecting every person. People are asking about how to report employers who have not reduced their workforces, saying that Sumitomo Dunlap is still running at 100%. Uh, the question was, how do you report employers who are not following the guidelines from Governor Andrew Cuomo? Uh, you can report it to the uh, New York Attorney General's office. And I had the info here. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, uh, my friend is getting it. Our Ben Swanenkamp from my office is pulling it up right now. There's a phone number you can call and an email address. Uh, essential businesses can stay in, uh, in business, but they, some of them do have to reduce the workforce. Now, people were like, how is a tire manufacturer essential business? And the question was regarding Sumitomo. Uh, actually, that type of production has been determined to be an essential business. The phone number to call to report a potential violation of any New York State labor law or the most recent orders of Governor Cuomo is area code 212-416-8700. Once again, if you want to report a violation of Governor Cuomo's orders or for that matter any uh, labor law, it goes to the New York State Attorney General's office. The phone number is 212-416-8700. How do I report an employer who is keeping a positive test in the office quiet? The question was, how do I report an employer who is keeping a positive test in the office quiet? Uh, under HIPAA guidelines, uh, this is personal health information of an individual, and it generally is not shareable. Uh, if an individual has shared it with their employers, they have done that, but the employers are still have an obligation under the law, under HIPAA, the Health Information Portability 
and uh, the Health Information Protection and Portability Act to, uh, to not share that information. So I know a lot of people think that's kind of nuts at this time, but it is the law. And that's why we don't identify the names of individuals or the streets that they live on. Uh, we'll identify if we know it, the places they've been. But part of the problem we're having right now with having 114 cases is there's so many cases and there's so many places that these people have been. It's tough to say this is where they have been because they've been everywhere. We know they've been in supermarkets. We know they've been in uh, superstores like Walmarts and Targets and you name it. So we just are telling everyone, assume it's everywhere because it pretty much is everywhere from a standpoint of people who have COVID-19 in our community have been across the whole community. Uh, we are contact tracing with the family members and close contacts to identify potential risks and spread. Uh, we have not been able to contact trace with every person who works in a Walmart and stuff like that because of the gigantic size of that population. Uh, but we are uh, sh uh, contact tracing and the lower level on the tighter level to ensure that we're preventing the spread as much as we can. But once again, just go under the assumption it's everywhere and potentially even where you work. Uh, hospitals, other buildings around Erie County being retrofitted or ready, being made ready for COVID patients? The question was hospitals that are being uh, retrofitted or being changed for COVID-19 patients, and the answer is yes and yes. Uh, first off, Catholic Health is retrofitting and changing St. Joseph's Hospital to be a COVID-19 only hospital. That's not open yet. Uh, they're, they're doing their work. Uh, but all hospitals have been mandated to increase their bed capacity by 50%. That's going to be tough to do. The governor has also recommended that hospitals increase their bed capacity by 100%. That's going to be very difficult to do. But the hospitals are right now doing their best to increase bed capacity by 50%. We are working with hospitals to identify alternative locations. Uh, actually, I was on a conference call earlier today with our policy group internally in Erie County, and we identified a number of locations that we believe could be turned into hospitals if we need them. So we're starting to do the behind the scenes work on that. I don't wanna talk specifically about those locations, uh, but we have looked at hotels. Uh, we've looked at larger areas that have uh, the ca capacity to heat a large room. So we're looking at uh, a whole bunch of different things. Hopefully we won't need it, but if we do, we're putting in place the measures now so we can act and get those open real quickly. Questions about testing. What is the best way to get a test? How to get a test at Quest or LabCorp? Uh, the questions are about testing. Once again, if you're not showing any symptoms and you haven't been in contact with an individual, you're not going to get a test. And that's just not here in Erie County. That's across New York State, and it's pretty much the same across the United States. Uh, if you're showing symptoms and you've been in contact with someone who has it, you may get a test. You have to go through your doctor. Your doctor would work with your various, uh, the, the, the various agencies, potentially about collection. Some doctor's offices have the ability to do swabs on site, and then you see those little boxes that are left outside for Quest or LabCorp to pick up the samples and then test it and get the results back. Uh, some are able to do that. Our Erie County Department of Health is doing certain testing on individuals that are at risk, as well as healthcare professionals, uh, law enforcement, uh, other types of individuals that were in, have chronic illnesses and, and, and may need to have a testing because they they showing the symptoms and may have been in contact with someone. Uh, but we want people to understand, uh, and I'm being all seriousness, we heard the president say that everybody who wants a test can get a test. That is not an accurate statement. There's not enough tests in the United States to test everybody who wants a test. Otherwise, we test everyone. But here's the other thing about it, too. Say you got a test and it came back negative. Great. You don't have COVID-19 at the time you were tested. What happens... If you get your negative test, then you go to the pharmacy, you go to Rite Aid, you go to CVS, and you're standing next to someone who then coughs on you, <coughs> who had it. Guess what happens? You might have it then. So a negative test isn't even proof that you won't get COVID-19 in the future. It just means at that moment you have not had COVID-19. So we want people to understand at this point, I'm just trying to be truthful. I want accurate information out in the public. Uh, we are telling folks, it's everywhere. We're asking you to physically distance yourself, to still connect socially through the various mechanisms by phone, by, uh, by Skype, by Zoom, you name it, all the stuff you can do. Uh, but stay away from each other if you haven't been in contact with each other recently because you could one person could have it and share it with another. And as we've seen, 
the majority of cases in Erie County that have tested positive are for people that are under the age of 50. Uh, we're worried about our friends that are older, but the majority of people who've tested positive are under the age of 50, which means anyone can get it. Next question, Peter. Question about dental emergencies. Where should people with a dental emergency go? Uh, questions about dental emergencies. Uh, we are still under the assumption, because dentists are considered, as well as their facilities, essential, that you would contact your dentist or, or a, a dental clinic. Uh, so just like a doctor is essential right now and other healthcare prof professionals, dentists are as well. So if you have a dental emergency, you should call your dentist. If you don't have a dentist, you should probably call one that's near you and see if they're open. There's quite a number of practices uh, that are out there. I know of a few of them just because as last year I had my two of my wisdom teeth pulled. It was not a fun thing to do on a political campaign, but probably was the best thing for the people of Erie County because I couldn't talk as much, and people don't necessarily want to hear from a politician during a political campaign. But uh, I had to have two wisdom teeth pulled last year, and I know there's lots of, uh, lots of clinics out there that are available. I have a dentist myself. It's based in South Buffalo uh, with lots of dentists out there. Call your dentist if you have a dental emergency. Okay. Um, people are talking about restaurants and takeout food. Uh, please support restaurants and also recommendations for, for ordering food. Uh, question, not really a question, it's more of a comment about doing takeout. Uh, lots of good restaurants out there. Two days ago I went to the Niagara Cafe, some great Puerto Rican food uh, on Niagara Street in Buffalo. Had some, had some wonderful pork, rice and beans. Thank you to the Niagara Cafe for once again a great meal. Uh, find the various restaurants out there. Try something different. Call ahead. Order ahead. You can pick it up. Some places are allowing you to order at the front desk. Others are only by uh, calling in. Uh, another place that I, was, I gave props to was Doc Sullivan's and on uh, Abbott Road in, in South Buffalo because they actually decided to close before the order came in. But then they realized they could do takeout. So Tommy Cowan and his group at Doc Sullivan's, they're able out there to deliver food to the public. There's lots of places like that. We'd be sit sitting here for probably 10 hours in a row if we announced every place that's open. But... Uh, Patronize your local restaurants. They're having a tough time right now. Uh, patronize them and, and help them get through this. Questions about daycare. Daycare. Why, why are we required to still pay 50% to keep our children out of daycare? We're keeping them at home to keep the space open for first responders' children and, of course, to keep them safe, yet have to pay 50% or risk losing their spot. Uh, the question is regarding daycare and why people who no longer have children in daycare may be paying for their daycare still. Uh, we have looked into it. There's a contractual uh, base to that. Unless the governor waives it, I don't necessarily have the power to do that. It would have to be the governor uh, to waive those contracts. Uh, at this point, uh, it is not a lot that I can do other than potentially pleading to the daycare operators to stop that, which we have asked some of the daycare operators, especially if they're filling those slots. If they're filling those slots, there's no way they should be double paid for it. If we're getting slots that are available for health care workers, first responders, and they're being paid, they shouldn't be charging other people for a slot that they're not using. Uh, we have passed that on to the governor's office, as well as a number of other things that we're worried about. Uh, we keep on passing that on. And sometimes you see adjustments to the guidances and the orders that are being done at the governor's office based on the information uh, that we are seeing locally. A little clarification on the labor and delivery question from earlier. Uh, can labor and delivery, women who are pregnant and going to be delivering, still have family members in the room when it's happening, or will that be a New York City thing? What do you know about that? Uh, the question was, can someone who is delivering a baby still have family members in the room? And I really can't answer that question. Uh, I don't know, and, and I don't want to tell you the a wrong answer. Uh, when I practice law, I used to advise my clients that I don't know is a legitimate answer to the question. If you don't know the answer to the question, don't make something up. I'd suggest that you contact your OBGYN and the practice to find out. They are making limitations in hospital settings. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if the spouse can be in the, uh, the delivery room. Uh, you should contact your OBGYN. Okay. If the president actually opens the government by Easter, do we in New York State and Erie County have the right or the ability to remain shut down? The question was, if the president does open the country up by Easter, does the, do we in Erie County and New York State have the right to shut down? The answer is yes. The governor can order a shutdown still. Uh, technically, there is no federal, there's, there's, no, there's no countrywide shutdown. There are states that are still acting as if everything's okay. We've seen pictures of it, like people at the beaches in Florida and Alabama which is stupid. 
I mean, they're going to get it, as the governor noted today. New York may be on the front lines, but they're going to get it because it's everywhere. Uh, and the governor does have the power to shut down all state. The, the, the president cannot change that. Uh, so, and right now, as I note, the president has not ordered the shutdown of the country. Uh, uh, state governors have. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut has, Mike DeWine. This is not a political issue. Mike DeWine's a Republican in Ohio, and, and he actually shut down the restaurants even before Governor Cuomo did. Uh, this is not a political issue. This is a public safety issue. And I think the smart governors out there are doing the right things and realize we're going to protect our public. It may hurt us economically, and it's going to hurt us economically. There's no doubt about it. We're looking at the impact it's going to have on Erie County government's finances, and are we going to have the revenues to be able to pay the serv for the services that we need to? It's a serious issue. Uh, but we should not be putting the dollars and cents of our economy and weighing that versus how many people will die and what level of death is okay to reopen the economy. What kind of country have we become if we're saying we're going to weigh 20,000 deaths in a state or millions in the country and say it's okay to have four or five million deaths because of COVID-19 in exchange for reopening the economy? That's not the United States I know. Next question. Are collection agencies essential? Are collection agencies essential? The answer is no. My understanding is they're not. Okay. Uh, why are some Erie County Surgical Centers still doing outpatient surgery? Uh, the question is why are some Erie County outpatient uh, centers still doing outpatient surgery, surgical surgery? Uh, there are some uh, exemptions. There are, most hospitals have stopped elective surgeries so that they could utilize the staff to address the issues. They actually have opened up beds. We get reports from the hospitals on the beds, and we're seeing the beds are being opened, knowing in the long run they may be filled with COVID-19. There are exemptions with regards to some of these outpatient surgery centers, uh, and they are those that they can be applied through New York State for it. So uh, my understanding is it is okay with regards to these outpatient. Uh, however, we are, once again, uh, recommending that uh, people act appropriately. Now's not the time to get some liposuction. Next question. Uh, how do you feel the governor is treating us here in upstate? This writer feels like it's uh, he, we're being ignored, but mostly because of the situation downstate. Uh, the question was, how do we feel the governor is treating us here in upstate? Are we being ignored because of what's happening in downstate? We're not being ignored. I think we just need to understand the scope of what they're dealing with in uh, New York City. Our, uh, one of our key individuals in the uh, personnel department is Sean Lavin. Uh, Sean is also a council member in the uh, town of Amherst. Uh, Sean is also a member of the National Guard. Uh, is he a captain or a lieutenant? I think he, he, he knows, no, he definitely was a lieutenant. He might even be a captain now. I'll have to look that up and now uh, Sean's going to be mad at me for not knowing. Uh, he just got ca called up and sent to New York City. And uh, it appears his National Guard unit might be on mortuary duty. That's a scary thought. That means they're going to be taking care of individuals who died. Uh, they have a significant problem in New York City. The Javits Center, the Jacob Javits Convention Center, is the largest convention center in North America. Maybe the McCormick Center in Chicago is bigger. Uh, and it is basically being turned into an ICU hospital for individuals with COVID-19. Uh, the governor talked to, earlier today about how he thinks he needs 30,000 ventilators, and we certainly don't have that. Uh, it's, it's bad down there, and it's going to get worse. Uh, they're not ignoring us. I've been in contact with governor's staff. Uh, when they've been giving us supplies. We've been, we got more testing reagents in. Uh, we're working with our partners in government. I thank Congressman Higgins for his help in, in a, 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 a procuring supplies was on the phone with actually Senator Schumer not too long ago and Senator Gillibrand in the last few days talking about the issue. Uh, it's not ignoring us. I think there is a real legitimate concern about what's happening in New York City right now where it is the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak across North America. Uh, if you look at other places like Los Angeles uh, and, and even uh, in Seattle and Washington, it was the first outbreak. The cases and deaths now in New York City are far surpassing them. We're very worried about what's happening in other parts of the country, uh, but I am very concerned about my friends and our friends downstate because uh, they are they are definitely uh, they're, they're definitely going through a real tough time. 
and uh, I think the governor and his staff have done as good a job as possible. Uh, we have more testing places that are open right now. As I said, I don't know the exact total of all tests that have been performed in Erie County. We're trying to get that number from New York State uh, because we don't get the negative reports from unless they were performed at our own lab. We don't get the negative reports from Quest. We don't get the negative reports from LabCorp. We don't get the negative reports from Flint. We don't. There were even ones that we saw came from the Mayo Clinic. We don't get the negative reports from the Mayo Clinic. We're trying to uh, obtain those to figure out exactly how many have been tested here. What support can small businesses get aside from taking out a loan? Uh, the question is what su support can small businesses get uh, other than taking out a loan? Uh, well, as we know, the federal government right now is in the process of negotiating an attempt, uh, a bill which would provide assistance to businesses as well as governments uh, with what we know will be a huge revenue loss. Uh, Erie County offers a number of programs uh, that are based off of uh, the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program. So does the City of Buffalo. If you're a small business in the City of Buffalo, you could talk to the City of Buffalo's Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, the same thing in Erie County. If you're outside in other parts of Erie County, you can talk to us. But there are limitations on that. Uh, it generally, generally is not for like a stoppage. Uh, it requires generally an investment from the business itself. Uh, but there are a number of programs that are available. And I think we're all waiting to see what the federal government does and the bill that will pass because we know there will be assistance there also for small businesses, not just loans. Is real estate an essential <laughs> business? Can people still buy and sell homes? Uh, the question is, is real estate an essential business? I'm, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, there is a list on the website of Empire State Development Corporation of what is an essential business and what is not. Uh, I do not know that answer. I would recommend if you want to know what's an essential business, type in Empire State Development and on the front of their page you will see information there on businesses, what are essential and what is not. You may have talked about 211 already. Can you share that that is a resource? Uh, it was talking about 211. Did I talk about 211 already? I actually don't think I did talk about 211 today. 211 is a resource that's out there. If you have a legitimate health care question, you can call our COVID-19 hotline. Uh, if you have another question, like well, have sanitation or a town changed, I'm trying to find a dentist, I don't know where to turn, uh, you can call 211. It is a resource that's available across our community, and it's as simple as that. Dial 211. How can we be confident the food containers from takeout are being handled without contamination? How can we uh, be confident that the food containers that are being offered by takeout are without contamination? Uh, it is a valid question. Our sanitarians from Erie County Department of Health are still going out and checking out takeout locations to ensure that they're following proper safety guidelines. Uh, we've all been washing our hands a ton lately. Well, if you were a food, a food worker, you know you're supposed to be washing your hands a ton to begin with. Uh, and our sanitation workers are going out there to ensure that proper uh, food uh, safety handling uh, provisions are being followed. If they're finding a location that isn't, they're going to shut them down. Simple as that. Next question. We got a few more. Okay. Uh, about, we've got about 10 minutes more at most. Okay. Do you have any information about the Tesla company thinking about converting to making ventilators? Uh, do I have any information on is Tesla going to convert to ventilators? Uh, my staff has actually been in contact with representatives of Tesla. Uh, to see if that is a possibility. There's lots of uh, discussions that are going on. My economic development staff has actually been focused on other areas right now. Some of them are, are in contact with local businesses that want to build different types of materials. I just passed on information today about a company that's a plastics manufacturer that believes they could build face masks. Uh, so we are uh, working with a number of them, including we have been in contact with Tesla. Uh, the issue is their, their machinery there is ma made to build solar roofs. So the question is, what can they do with the machinery there? Can they convert it over to ventilators or not? Uh, and those are discussions that are going on. General Motors and Ford have said they're interested in potentially doing that, but they also realize it's not going to happen overnight. First off, you've got to get the supplies to build the ventilator, and you have to have the ability to build it by having the proper machinery to do it. So it, if they do transfer over, whether it's Tesla, GM, or Ford, still going to be weeks, potentially months, till they really get to the point where they can build them, at least weeks. So I'm not expecting anytime soon that any of these are going to be building ventilators. What about unemployment? What happens if you can't get through to complete your claim? Uh, the question is, what about unemployment? What happens if you can't get through to complete your claim? Uh, I believe there is a 1-800 number for the Department of Labor. Uh, so our folks are uh, checking it out right now, but you can also call 211, and they'll be able to provide that information to you. 
211 has all the phone numbers for important resources like that, such as the Department of Labor. So if you started a claim, you couldn't finish it, uh, you can either look for, online for the Department of Labor's phone number or call 211 and they'll give it to you. Okay. Uh, can Erie County Department of Health work with Quest to do drive through testing? Uh, the question is can Erie County Department of Health work with Quest to do drive through testing? Uh, Quest does not actually take samples of individuals who are showing symptoms. Uh, so if you go to a Quest lab normally, they have like blood drawn, uh, they'll do it, but they don't expose their individual or their, their workers to individuals who may be sick, including COVID-19. Uh, we're looking at all kinds of alternatives. Uh, once again, this is not a testing issue. People are so focused on the testing. What we're trying to do is to prevent people from coming in contact with each other because it's everywhere. And if you do the percentages and do the numbers, if everyone in Erie County got it, there'd be thousands of people who would die based on the percentage of how many people contracted and died in Wuhan, in Italy, and in Iran. And we're trying to avoid that. Uh, we know that more tests will be available eventually, but uh, the most important thing is if you are feeling ill, is to talk to your doctor. Your doctor can talk to Quest. So even if we took the sample, uh, it's your doctor that has to authorize it anyway. A couple more questions. Okay. Do you know of anything in the works for child support relief as courts are closed and all honest child support paying parents will fall into arrears? Uh, the question is child support and what happens if you uh, fall into arrears on child support. Uh, you should talk to your attorney. I would recommend you talk to your attorney if you've uh, got child support issues. Uh, because they're, while child family courts are closed, I know they are still holding certain cases going on. I don't believe they're child support cases, but you should talk to your attorney. Uh, I, can't, I am an attorney by trade, but I, I can't give you free legal advice here because I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, what your attorney can confirm with the court system what's going on, uh, whether cases will be held and heard, and what happens if you fall into arrears. Are there ways to help seniors who possibly cannot get to the grocery stores in the morning? What can we do for them? Are there ways to help seniors if they can't get to the grocery stores? Well, the first thing is don't approach a senior you don't know and haven't been in contact with because if you have the illness, you could pass it on to them. Our Meals on Wheels program is still operational. I was in contact with our Commissioner of Senior Services, David Shank, today, uh, who has been in contact with the Meals on Wheels operation in Feedmore, Western New York, uh, Tara Ellis, the Executive Director. We've been adding people to the Meals on Wheels. If you believe that there's a senior who's not getting a nutritious meal, if you're a senior who's not getting a nutritious meal, uh, call our Senior Services Helpline, which is still operational, at 858-2626. That's 858-2626, and they can schedule you to be put into the Meals on Wheels uh, uh, program and which d drivers are still delivering it, but they have new protocols in place. They're not where they perform be beforehand would have handed the meal to the senior. Now they don't. They make certain the senior gets it. They have eye contact with the senior, but they're not coming directly in contact. So we don't want people just showing up with bags of groceries for maybe your neighbor and then going in the house and shaking their hand, say how you're feeling, because you might give them COVID-19. There are resources out there. Call 858-2626. Uh, people want to know what you're drinking. People yeah. want to know what I'm drinking? Yes. <laughs> I'm a golfer. It's Arnold Palmer. It's Arnold Palmer. Lemonade and tea. It's not scotch. That I sometimes say for the evening. Uh, here's last question. Last question. Has New Era been considered at all to open their plant in Derby to make gowns and or masks? Uh, has New Era been considered? I know that information has come in. We've passed it on to our economic development folks. I don't know what New Era's plans are. If they have the capability, it would be great if they did. Uh, I don't know even if they still have their uh, machinery there. I, last I knew, they had moved a lot of it out. But uh, we passed it on to our economic development folks. And... Uh, I know the New Era folks are local. I would certainly hope that they would reconsider opening their plan if they have the capability of doing it so that they could make uh, appropriate to wear for our local health care professionals. Uh, that's all the questions I have. I've got to get on a conference call. My life is a lot of conference calls, meetings. I'm getting my steps in because I've been walking a lot of between the floors here. And the fourth floor is our call center with the public. The 12th floor is our operations for law enforcement. The ninth floor, of course, is the health department. 14th floor 
is our buildings and grounds as well as Department of Public Works and where we often hold the uh, press conferences. Uh, we're looking at holding the press conferences in a different location because buildings and grounds actually needs their location back. Uh, but what we're doing, folks, is we're trying to get the most accurate information out to the public. I know it's a, it's a very scary time to a lot of people, and I understand that. Uh, if you're scared, I understand it. Uh, I've gotten text messages from people saying, Mark, when's this going to end? And I can't give them an answer. I can't say it's going to end next week. It's going to end two weeks later. Uh, we just all have to be in this together. We are all in this together as a community, as a state, as a country, as a binational region. I can look out my window right now and I can see Fort Erie, Ontario. And I know the people in southern Ontario are scared just like the people in western New York are. But we'll get this together by banding together, doing the right things, protecting our fellow neighbors by not getting together and, 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 and instead physically distancing. If you want to go out there and record a song and put it on YouTube like I did, go ahead. I uh, got a lot of requests for other songs. I don't know if I'll get to one tonight, but we'll certainly uh, be doing them again in the future. Uh, and I'm glad people are enjoying them. Uh, but continue to have contact with each other, even if it's by phone. Uh, because the one thing that we know is that uh, we're going to get through this together. And the best way is to share our information together, let people know how you're doing. And in the end, if you do that, uh, it will all be better for it. Uh, so from my office in downtown Buffalo, I want to thank Peter Anderson for manning the laptop, Derek Smith for, man for manning the uh, camera, Ben Swanenkamp, who's here, for providing additional information, our usual camper operator, Monica Boutin. Today's her day off. We are making certain that people take days off. Uh, I want to make certain that our workers are fresh. I don't want to burn them out. Same thing should happen to other employers, too, especially in the healthcare profession. Please don't burn out your workers. Because if we need them, and we do need them, the last thing we can do is have them sick with something else because they're burned out from an illness. With that, take care, everyone. I hope you have a great day. And remember, let's be in solidarity with each other. Bye.